Welcome to another replay analysis. Oh my god. It's been a couple days, but we're in another one. This is a platinum level Protoss versus Protoss with our boy Fury, who's making making waves. He's making waves. And his opponent is I love Maria Mariah Carey. Mmm. Mmm. Ooh. And someone someone in my Twitch chat just said the word cringe to my intro. What? What? No, it's not. That was good. Don't hate. It was not cringe. Alright? You're making it cringe. By speaking. Okay, we got a gateway scout. This is a pretty quick scout. Uh, that's okay though. I don't mind it. Uh, for lower level play in general, when you're not really too confident in terms of what the hell could happen, I am totally fine with a gateway first scout, especially if it's a beta GM style. It totally makes perfect sense then, um, which is what I believe this will become. It'll probably be beat the GM level of sheet. Mariah Carey is pretty hot though for her age. Yeah, she's an attractive woman. I would agree with that. Okay, so we got double people going for gateway first. Mm. Double gas early from this person. That's uh, one gate double gas is questionable. Okay, there you go. There's a double gate. But now, here's, you know, here's the thing, right? Late as fuck core. Super late core. For both of you. Let's see. Okay, your gateway's done at 121. <clears throat> and then is uh, this person's gateway is also finishing at like 122. Yeah, 122. It's done now. So <clears throat> let's see. Uh, you know how long it takes to build the core. What's your camera doing? Is it looking at that base? Okay, you're freaking out about gas deals. If you're going to go for bronze GM style, if you get gas stolen, screw it. It's annoying. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I'm saying is actually true, but at the same time, it's not. If you're not comfortable about blocking your ramp against the depths. Uh, I don't want to... What should I tell you? Okay, here's what I'll tell you. If you're This is actually the best way thing I can tell you. If you're worried about your gas getting stolen... If you're worried about your gas getting stolen, just do this. Because you're wasting so much time. And I, I think that's why this person also built a gas super early. Which was not very efficient. It's bad. It's, this is not the greatest. Mariah Carey, I see you in chat. Okay. This is too early. But again, well, you actually, you went double gateway though, so it's okay. That's okay. If you're going double gateway, it makes sense. But you better be aggressive. But now, back for Fury... All you gotta do is, if you're worried about your gas getting stolen, right-click it with your probe. Just right-click the gas with your probe on the gas itself. Your probe touches it. Then tell your probe to hold position once it's like there. Because if, if you tell it to, if you tell it to right-click the gas and it goes all the way to the gas and stops, and then you say hold position probe, what'll happen is is if your opponent tries to build a gas on the gas, it would be like this green box here where the gas would be. This top right part of the green box would be red because the probe would be in the way. That's what I did, I thought. That could be what you did. It doesn't matter if you did or didn't do that, but what I am seeing what you're doing is you're wasting way too much fucking time staring at it. Watch how much time you look at it. Watch this. It's about time management, right? That's what it's really about. Like, Bing, bang, boom, bow, bow. Hit those checkpoints. So here comes the probe. Let's see what you're looking at. You're like, oh god, a probe is coming. Scary. Do not take my... Like, you're, you're ready, right? You're fucking ready. You're like, I've played Sir Gamer more. That dickhead. He does this to me every fucking day. You did it at 124. You could look away right now and do something else. Like, get ready to build your core. You should already be building your core. Right? But look at your camera. 124 was when you did this. Three, four, five, six... Seven. This is your camera. Eight, nine, 
10, 11. Like it, you waited for like about eight seconds till you built that Nexus. And you built that Nexus when you had like 480 minerals and you started it in your main mineral line. Like you started, you like said, build a Nexus from here. You didn't even have a probe going there yet. You know what I mean? So it's just <clears throat> like you're slowing yourself down because you're paranoid about your gas getting stolen. If you're paranoid about your gas getting stolen, just tell a total position on it and just stop looking at it. Like it's going to do the job. You're going to be fine. It's, you don't have to stare at it anymore. And everything else is super like your, your core and Nexus are so fucking late already. <laughs> okay. So you scouted double gateway with one gate expand. You are one gate expanding and you scouted your opponent with double gateway opener. You have to make your third pylon in front of your natural. Like, somewhere over here. Like, anywhere in that green box would be great. And then build a battery. Because if you don't do that, you will lose the game if your opponent does one of two things. If you don't build a battery, and you make one stalker, you will get killed by two stalkers if your opponent makes two stalkers, walks across the map, and he makes two more, two more, two more, two more, and he just pressures you that way. If I was playing you, I would kill you. Guaranteed, if you don't make a battery, you would just die. If you do make a battery, you're safe against that, but now you're not safe against the depths entirely, but at least the adepts can't kill the stalker either, ever. But what you need to do then is I would say it's very realistic that if you then, you know, go for one gateway opener with making probes and you make a battery at your natural, you keep making probes and all that shit, but you leave a probe maybe like right here. Just leave it like right there. Why is that relevant? Because you can, oh, Jesus, you can make a battery right there and you can fully seal off that wall so that adepts can't shade into your main base so that you don't just suddenly lose probes, probes, probes like crazy. Uh, this is gonna buy, this, this is gonna be how you get around this uh, circumstance of your opponent having potential to fuck you over while you go for a really fast natural. But if you do all these things like I just said correctly, you can take no damage on your probes and you can get ahead ec economically and then suddenly you can have more you know more economy to work with which means you can have more gates and you can outproduce this guy the the player playing on low economy higher gateway count right off the bat and it would be nice if you also left your stalker like right there if you had a battery right, right here and you made your stalker stand like right there, you could always have your stalker pull back to the battery if you need to, but you could see adept shades coming from far away. If you're standing like right there, you could see a distance of like that far for adept shades. So you have like a full screen length to react to it and build a battery if you need to. Okay, so your battery is a little late, I would say. But you still did it, so I'm happy you did it. Your positioning is good as well. I would love it if you leave a probe right there. Uh, the reason why you need... So here's here's why you need to leave a probe. If you notice at in higher level PvP, you'll always see players scouting with their probe against double gateway openers. And they usually what they'll do is they'll poke with their probe and like maybe lose the probe. Or they'll build like a pylon, their own pylon, and they'll run away. When the gateways are like at 80% of the way done. And why is that? Because they want to see what pops out of the gateway. If you saw it was two adepts, you need to fucking leave a probe there. If you saw it was two stalkers, you need to defend your battery. You know what I mean? Like that's the difference of how that would go. If it's adepts, you obviously don't want to let them get in your main base and kill your probes. If it's stalkers, you just don't want to let him overpower your units without having a battery. So that's how you can kind of like read what's going on. And if you don't read what's going on and you're playing just like, I don't know, we'll see. 
it's a good idea just to leave a probe there because you went for a fast expand. Like, look at your expansion. 15 probes. Look at this one. It just finished. So, if you don't know what gateway units your opponent's making, but you do know your opponent's going to have less economy than you, it's just safer to have a probe ready to block out adepts. Because that's the only way you could get fucked right now. Because you made a battery to stop every other aspect of getting fucked over. Which is like the stalker pressure, if that's what he decides to do. But if you can just leave a probe here and you have the chance to... Or you guarantee there's no chance of adepts killing you. Then all your probes can mine happily because if he goes to attack these probes, your stalkers can stay on them and kill them until they're dead. And these probes are always protected by a battery that would get made and then canceled later. And for those of you that are like, Vibe, why do you make a battery? Why wouldn't you just make a pylon? <clears throat> because both of them cost 100 minerals. But one of them only has an 18 second build time and one of them has a 29 second build time. So, and but you want to cancel it overall no matter what. You don't want to let it finish. So you give yourself more time to get rid of the adepts before you have to eventually cancel. So you're not building it, canceling it, building it, canceling it, building it, canceling it. You're just building it once and then canceling it eventually. And then you're good to go. And then the adepts are done. Gives you more time to, to deal with them. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. So your tech is super late. I would say <clears throat> this second gateway should have been tech, not a second gateway. You could have paired a second gateway with your tech, but if you're just going to make one building, it should have been your tech building. Uh, if you're going for one gate expand, you here's why. If you were going to get... If your opponent decided to not expand, which you have no idea about right now, and instead went for like a proxy robo, you would just die. You would die. There's zero chance you would hold a proxy immortals right now. There's, you would just be fucking dead. So... If you're gonna like when you do make your second gateway, that needs to be paired with your robo, or you just straight up make the robo if you're making it a little earlier because you're paranoid about being killed by an all in, which is okay as long as you keep can, can continue to afford to make probes and soccer still. <clears throat> but yeah, like the fact that you don't have a robo is uh, super scary because the robo scales better than two soccer's and they're both four supply, like by a lot. <clears throat> Don't forget the Chrono Boost. If you're going to go for a third like this, you're going to start saturating. You should just, just might as well Chrono Boost. Otherwise, your probing has been uh, good. But you're not Chronoing anything anymore. You're just letting them stack. That's not very good. Don't ever go triple forge. Do not ever go triple forge. No. Single forge. Double, maybe. Single, yes. Double is good against Zerg and Terran. Single is good against Protoss. Triple forge is good never. Ever. Like, don't ever go triple forge. It's too expensive. Uh, and it doesn't really give you enough benefit. The reason why Double Forge isn't the most severe against Protoss is because you're going for a hybrid army where half of your supply of army is like, or like a good chunk of your army benefits heavily from shields and a good chunk of your army benefits heavily from armor. For instance, Archons and Zealots. Zealots obviously benefit better from armor and Archons obviously benefit better from shields. And it's just too expensive in general because everything benefits well from weapon. And if you don't make triple forage, you'll have a faster army that is larger, quicker. And more army means more damage. And I personally, I would rather be the Protoss with one forge plus three weapons and a really fast army. Like it would really be plus two weapons and like maxed out as opposed to a Protoss player with all three upgrades, one, 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 and I'm only at like 140 supply. Or like, or maybe not that little, but like 170. 
or something. And I'm already researching like 222 as well, but it's not done yet. Like it's, you, you can't, because here's the thing. If you go triple forge, you can't spam chrono boost it either. If you go one forge, you can chrono it. It's done, chrono it. It's done, chrono it. It's done, chrono it. It's done, chrono it. You get a really fast level three weapons. Super fast because it's never off chrono. Chrono, 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 chrono. If you go triple forge, that's now triple the fucking usage of energy off your nexus. And you can go triple chrono like the first time. And then when those chronos are over, you try to chrono again with all three of them and you can maybe chrono only one of them. And the other two are like, oh, no chrono. I don't have enough energy for that now. Because instead of spending 50 every single 20 seconds, you're spending 150 every 20 seconds. Which is a lot more. It, you can't afford that. You'll have a lot of downtime on Chrono Boost. So, your upgrade timers are going to be a lot later. So, you would literally have a guy who hits like level 3 weapons when the other guy is still 1 1 1. And level 3 weapons is so much more powerful than 1 1 1. Because 1 1 1, the weapons scale at a faster pace than armor and shields do. Armor and shields are always a l 1 value, it's always worth 1, 1, 1, 1. That's it, it never changes. Every single unit in this game that gets an armor upgrade off of an Evo Chamber, a Forge, an Engineering Bay, an Armory, a Spire, a Cyber Core, it's always plus one, plus one, plus one in the armor department. That's it. But for weapons, Stalkers gain, I think, three damage it is. Uh, first is armored, and they get like two damage versus normal. I, I'm, I'm actually not 100% sure on that. I'm pretty sure, though. Zealots gain one plus one, so armor does affect the Zealot hard. They are like... Zealot weapons and armor counteract each other because Zealot is one times two, because it has two attacks and it gets one damage per. Uh, and Archon gains uh, two damage per shot versus, or I think is it three? I think it's actually I can't remember now. Fuck, fucking Protoss units, dude. Uh, I know it gets four. I I know the versus Zerg uh, situations, but if, if, like versus like for instance an Archon versus a Zealot, okay, and which is what the most like the most. Uh, common situation is going to be an archon is going to hit a zealot plus four per fucking upgrade so three weapon upgrades is worth 12 fucking armor upgrades in comparison to like equal numbers there it's not the same thing so my point i'm trying to make here is armor has values that are worth more than one armor is literally always one so if you're Goal is to go triple forge, to go for triple upgrades. It's going to slow down how fast you can pace your weapon upgrade, in both chrono boost and economy spending. And you'll get there to late. You will get there later, which will overall weaken you surprisingly enough. Because I would I would rather have more army with faster weapon upgrades than slower army because more expenses are going into forges and slower upgrades because more chrono boost is or more chrono boosts are being dispersed along more forges. It's not as good. Literally, one forge against Protoss is prime. It's very good. Two is good against Zerg. Two is good against Terran because armor affects Zerg a lot more. And do you know why that is? A unit like an Archon does not exist. A unit like an Immortal does not exist against... Uh, on, on the Zerg side. Or on the Terran side. Those units don't exist. And do you, know, you want to know what those units are? They hit fucking hard and fast. They hit really hard and they hit really fast. Siege tanks hit really hard, but they're really slow. And they can't even shoot once shit's on top of them. They're stuck in place. Zerg units, like lurkers are pretty good, but you can't even get lurkers till much later. But lurkers are super good. But like, for instance, like what are you dealing with most of the time when you deal with Protoss and Terran? Or uh, uh, Zerg and Terran. Zerglings. Hydralisk. Marines. Like, these units do low damage with quick rates of fire. So armor upgrades benefit a shitload more. Tons more. Units that have slower damage, or slower attack speed, but higher damage, armor doesn't really apply to those. And Immortals and Archons are in the high damage department. They don't hit for, like, 10 damage. They hit for, like, 50 or, like, 40 damage a shot. So if you're reducing 1 damage off of 40 and it goes to 39 now, like... It doesn't really do anything. However, if you're fighting a marine that does six every 
point four seconds, point four three or whatever with Stimpak. That does make a big difference now, because suddenly that's like instead of six 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 six, it's now it's five 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 five. It does a substantial percentage of its damage, so armor ma armor matters a lot more against units that hit fast and weak, as opposed to units that hit slow and heavy. So yeah, triple forge against Protoss makes no sense. It's just lazy, in my opinion, because it means that you can do it once and forget about it. You're like, oh, I'll get them all, then you know, then just call it a day. Whereas if you only had one, because the thing is, is like you might only have to spend seven minutes, or realistically, because you can't chrono boost it as much, you'll spend ten minutes getting all three at the same time. Whereas if you got one forge and you wanted to get all three upgrades off of just one forge, you'd have to spend 18 minutes constantly chrono boosting it the whole time over and over and over and over getting all nine upgrades out of the one forge, which is a lot more time to pay attention to it, which is harder, but it's better. Against Protoss, you should literally go like this. Weapon, weapon, weapon. Armor, armor, armor. Shield, shield, shield. That's what you should do against Protoss. Like, this is really bad. You're going to chrono boost them all one time and it's going to be done. Because you can't afford chronos anymore. And now they're all just chugging away at no chrono. <laughs> okay. So your economy looks pretty good overall. Yeah, like you got there faster than Mariah Carey. Uh And now you do it again. You're triple upgrading all three at once. And now look at your Nexus. You have one Chrono Boost there. Zero. Zero. You have two there. So you actually could do a second wave of three Chronos again. But if, like, you, there was, did you see how much time was on your, like, you would already be almost, like, halfway done. Like, you, I would say even, like, 60% of the way done on level two weapons already. At this point in time. Or, like, 70%. Because there was, like, you Chrono Boosted your Forges last time once. And you just let it be. Whereas if you chrono boosted it like four times in a row, it would have been like plus one. So much faster. Also, the thing I don't like as well is you stop chrono boosting your probes way too fast. So not only so we talked about upgrades a lot, right? We talked about upgrades a lot about why I don't like the triple forge thing. But here's another thing: because of the triple forge thing, you expended your chrono boost way faster than I think you should have. And then what did you do after you chrono boosted your forges? You went back to chrono boosting your nexus. And you know what you did in general? You didn't chrono boost your nexus for about two minutes before you made the forges because you were saving it to then chrono boost your forges. So your chrono boost energy is really fucking sloppy in this game. You really need to just honestly chrono boost your probes non-stop until your three ba three base saturation is done, which means you're seven about to be at seventy probes. And you can finish off your fourth base without Chrono Boost because then you can dedicate all Chrono Boost to Forges and Robos. In general. But don't ever have these like Chrono hiccups where it's like no Chrono for a while and then we'll go back to it and then no Chrono for a while and we'll go back to it again. Because you just get your base set up slower at that, at that pace because you're not saturating your bases nearly as fast as you could be. So, uh, yeah. That's the big one for you, I would say, this game that's fucking you over.
<laughs> you should be scouting right now, too. You are. Good. Otherwise, you're doing a good job. Your production... Uh, the, the only thing as well is I think may maybe, realistically, you could do a little bit faster. The fact that you have 2,000 minerals and you're not maxed yet is not great. It means that your pacing's still kind of slow. You gotta speed up a little bit. These are trial and error situations where whenever you play a game, if like you got to 80 probes and you were like, okay, I'm at 80 probes, and then you, you know, you still haven't made your gateways yet, Maybe start making them a little bit faster. Like maybe start making the gateways once you're like at maybe like 74 probes. If you can still spend your money, like whatever works for you, because do I think that you can build a base as fast as what, you know, needs to be done? Not always. Not everyone plays the game at like fucking 500 APM or whatever, or 400 APM. It's just, you need to, you need to make sure you spend your money a little bit faster than that. Because the fact that you're getting up to 2000 minerals and you still haven't maxed yet means that you're building these gateways too late for how you play the game. The pace you're giving yourself, you should build them a tiny bit faster. The big the big deal is, is just don't cut probes to make gateways and then go back to making probes. Don't do that. Just like don't stop chrono boosting probes to chrono boost forges and then go back to chrono boosting probes. Do not do that either. Just flow your economy out and then do everything else around it. And as long as you can afford to keep doing your economy and add stuff to it, you're great. Builds good. But you have way too much money right now. But now that you're going to max, it's okay. But if you really think about it, if you still have 2,000 resources in the bank overall, and you're about to max, you could have probably maxed like 17 seconds ago. Like how long does it take you to mine this? Like, you, like realistically, it's not exact either because you still have to make the gateways and wait for them to finish and shit like that. But I would say realistically, you could have maxed probably like 10 minutes. That's much more real. Like, it's 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 real. Uh, and if you max at, like, 10 minutes and you move out at 10 minutes, you could be at his base by, like, 10.20. Which would mean you'd be having a situation where you'd be 200 supply versus 160 right now. Shit like that. And now you are maxed and you're still not moving out. Like, you've been maxed for the last, like, 20 seconds and you're just chilling here. And you have a lead and it's going to go away. Like, I don't know what you're doing right now. There we go. Make sure to. Uh, you didn't do this in the game I played against you either. You really need to do this though. Cannon battery, cannon battery, cannon battery, cannon battery, cannon battery. You need to go cannon battery. And the reason why is because you have nothing now. You have nothing. That's going to stop you from getting run buys and like maybe one DT in every base or a couple fucking zealots show up and suddenly pff, all your probes die at one base when all you would have needed to make is like two cannons and a battery. And then if like three zealots show up, you could be like, oh shit, base is under attack. Oh, my cannon just died, but a second cannon still is fighting them and it has aggro. How about I just warp it around the units? You rebuild the cannon that's dead and you're, you lose no probes or the cannon straight up just kill like a DT or something. And you don't you don't even realize you're like you watch the replay that like you know I right after the game's over and you're like wait what he said DTs are on the map I didn't even know that oh my cannon battery killed them all I didn't even know that happened holy shit that's awesome <laughs> cool did it okay that's nice cannon battery's good but like you have the money to do it you have the time to do it but you're not doing it and if I had to guess it's kind of probably because like you're looking at your army again macro is everything and. You will get picked apart by people that will multi-prong you if you don't cover your bases. It's a good first... It's like literally what I'm telling you. Like cannon battery is literally training wheels for getting ready to learn how to micro. Was it you? You are. This is your camera right here. Cannon battery is training wheels for like learning how to start microing. And then once your multitasking is good enough, then you can start going, you know what? I think I'm good enough at StarCraft 2 at this point to where I don't need to go cannon battery at every base because I can handle f more three, four prong, multi prong attacks. Oh, yeah. Like, you start feeling confident to be able to handle shit like that. Yo, uh, Amerit, thank you very much for the 13 3 sub, dude. Welcome back. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Much love. Like, you're still looking at your army. This is your camera. 
He's still looking at your army. There you go. You would get annihilated. If this guy just made like five DTs and went one, two, three, four, five, you'd just be like, <laughs> like 40 probes die within the next like eight seconds. And you're like, okay, well, fuck. That sucks. And then you're, you know, that's how you lose the game. Also, if you're going to go for carriers, which I think would make the most sense here, if you're going to go Void Rays, it makes no sense right now. Phoenix, nothing makes sense out of these Stargates right now except for carrier because it's late game transition. If this was early game, it, other things could make sense. But if it's late game transition, nothing makes sense out of these Stargates besides carrier, not even Tempest right now. And the way you want to build it is you build one Stargate and let it be. Let it just go like you did. And then you start off with a fleet beacon right as the Stargate's done. And then add more Stargates as well. If you make more Stargates and then you just don't build a fleet beacon. That is incorrect. Which is what you kind of just did. You just made three. St there we go. But a fleet beacon's a 43 second build time. A Stargate's a 43 second build time. So basically the, the fact that they're the same build time. And you can't build a fleet beacon until you have a Stargate. Because it's a tech path. If you just build a fleet beacon first and then build stargates after, you'll be able to actually use the stargates when the fleet beacon's done. But now all these stargates that you built first, like it's not that big of a deal. I just want to make sure you understand this concept. All these stargates now that are the, the other ones you built early are just now going to sit here for 13 seconds, bare minimum, before you can even use them. So it makes no sense to go stargates first before fleet beacon. Just go Fleet Beacon first, as soon as you can, and then add on the rest of your Stargates. But I'm glad you didn't do all three Stargates at once, and then make a Fleet Beacon when they were all done. Because that would have been a, just, you, all you would have done then is tied up all your money no, for no reason. Uh, so, just making the first Stargate for Tech Path, and then go Fleet Beacon, and then make Stargates makes the most sense, if you're going to go carry your transition. Oh, Yo, Archmage, yeah. thank you for the six month resub, dude. Thank you for the six months. Six months, Vibo. Less than three. Yeah, boy. Yo, Archmage, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Much love. Also, if you have the idea that you're going to go for a late game carrier transition, you need to also... So just like how I said you need to pair with when the first Stargate is done, you then make the Fleet Beacon and then pair on other Stargates, however many you want to go to, like three, four, or whatever, five. The second thing you need to do is when you first make the idea in your mind where you go, all right, in like three minutes, I'm going to do a carrier transition. I'm going to start going carriers. As soon as you make that Stargate, like a, like a synapse in your brain should fire and you should go, what does Stargate always pair with? Plus one weapons right there, baby. You need to build that first Stargate with plus one weapons and chrono boost that shit immediately. Because if you make carriers in a carrier transition and you're at zero weapon upgrades or you're at only level one, and you have like nine carriers with level one weapons or zero weapons. They suck fucking ass. They are bad if you don't have weapon upgrades. They're really good though if you do. One weapon upgrade. Remember I talked about how weapon upgrades have multiple value for units. One weapon upgrade for a carrier is worth 16 damage. It is one of the biggest weapon upgrades in the fucking game. 16 damage per upgrade. You get 48 damage bonus by having max weapons or not. It's fucking insane how much it changes the carrier. So you need to really need a chrono boost that. And it, it, uh, you know, and I would say definitely don't make a second cyber core and make armor as well. Just make the one and go weapon, 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 and then do armor, armor, armor. Just like how I was telling you with the one forge, you go weapon, 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 armor, 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 shield, shield, shield. It, it, it gets you in the habit of chrono boosting it repeatedly. Every like 20 seconds, check it, chrono it, check it, chrono it. Shh, 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 shh,
And now you're gonna win the game because this, yeah, let's say this person has no money, but uh, yeah. And now you're starting the weapon. Um, did hold on, let me back it up for a second. I want to see when your cyber when your fleet begins done. Okay, so your fleet beacon's done, and you have control of the map right now. If you want to make a carrier transition, there are two ways to make this not suck dick. Okay, or actually, there's, now there's three. I, know, I just saw you did something else I don't like. And now, now there's three, just to make sure you know this. Number one, do not rally these carriers to the front of your base. Like the fact that they're going to go all the way to the front, where you're going to warp in at the pylon, I don't like it. Because carriers... You do not want them to get reset repeatedly, so you want them to be more you want them to be more covered, less exposed. So I would say rally point that shit to like right there. Or like right here. Like the cliff. So it still could help if you get attacked and you can have other units, you know, initiating. So you're not just doing nothing. But you don't want them to just be sitting ducks in the middle of nowhere so someone can blink under them and kill them all. Or something like that. You don't want that. So don't rally your carriers super far exposed there. Make sure they're like tucked away in your base a little bit. First of all, secondly, do not ever attack with your carriers. Okay, this is something that people. I'm t I'm telling you this right now, and I'm and if you if you really listen to this and you fully understand this and a concept, you're ahead of the curve. Here's what it is. Carriers are death ball. Stalker, immortal, archon, is mobility. If you attack with like three carriers, 20 stalkers, six immortals, and like four archons, your carriers have a high chance of dying in that fight. And so does the rest of your army. So what you should do is you should keep your carriers defensive and you build them up as you trade this army away. So if you lose 16 supply, that's too short of three carriers because three carriers is 18 supply because each carrier is worth six. So it's always multiples of six, six, 12, 18. You're two supply short of three carriers right here. And this is much better to make three carriers and remax and then sit on it than it is to then just shove, the, shove those carriers across the map like two or three at a time. So what sh you should do is is you can still remake zealots and other stuff like that while you're making carriers as long as you aren't maxed out. But for instance, if you're going to go for a carrier transition, it makes no fucking sense to fight with this army right here, lose supply, and then remake that same supply. And I think that's what you do in a second here. I think you remake a bunch of stalkers or something. Okay, you made zealots. Zealots are the better choice at least. Where the hell are they, by the way? Where are you making them? There they are. Zealots are the better choice. They, they're the better choice. I'm glad you made Zealots over anything else, because the reason why is they don't cost gas, and you need gas for carriers, a lot of it. Each one is worth 250 But you got to be really careful, though, about not using your carrier transition. Like, why invest into it if you're not going to use it, right? So, because all you're doing now is weakening your bank that you could be overwhelming him with the whole time. So if your opponent kills some of your supply, remax carrier as much as you can. And if you can't remax any more carrier, you could go back into making zealot and other shit like that too. And then from that point on, your probes are done. Your forge upgrade again. If you only had one forge upgrade, you'd have a lot of you'd have good amounts of chrono energy to spare here, which means you could chrono boost your production instead of triple forge. But you could be chrono boosting your cyber core. You could be chrono boosting your one forge. And you could also be currently wasting all four of your stargates right now. So you could have carriers out much faster. And once you get to a point where you have like 15 carrier. So basically, once you get to a point where your army is like basically no gateway units. It's pure carrier. Then you can move out with the carrier. Like it's not ever a good idea to be like, I got six carriers and a bunch of stalkers. Let's go attack them with everything. That army sucks ass. Eight carriers and a bunch of stalkers. That army sucks ass. Like, 15 carriers and, like, no stalkers. That army is good. You want to have pure carrier for the most part. 
You do not want dead supply. Stalkers, once you once you transition to something better, stalkers are dead supply. If you and your opponent are both going air, immortals are dead supply. Zealots are dead supply. Archons are okay. But Archons are honestly not as good either, in my opinion, as just making more carriers. Like, carriers are just easier, and they're fucking strong. Don't weaken your death ball, essentially, is all I'm saying. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, that, that's that how you would do it. That's, that's how you would make it work. You, you just don't be that guy that throws out fucking 12 supply of carrier at your opponent and then you lose it and then you do it again and you lose it and you do it again and you lose it and you're like why am i not winning i keep i'm trying to go care sky toss but i keep losing everything stop attacking with sky toss are carriers the only good option at this stage of the game yes yes they are carriers are a good option at this stage of the game and the reason why they're a good option at this stage of the game is because upgrades are fucking insane right now they should be. Like, if you if you go carriers right away, you can do so many things to beat them. So many things can beat carriers if you make them right away. And also, if we're talking about platinum level, there is one way you can beat carriers late game, which is Phoenix. But I don't expect players in platinum to go Phoenix against carrier. It's really hard. It's not easy. And I, don't, I highly do not expect a platinum player to be able to pull that off. Uh, so, if you just make carriers... Good, you're good to go. But yeah, th that's how that works, though. That's how that concept works. If you're going to go death ball, you go death ball. If you go for mobility, you go mobility. This is mobility. This is death ball. They're totally different. So just don't ever attack with your death ball. Let it build as you throw away mobility and you rotate your supply into the other. And suddenly you have no more mobility. You have all death ball. And then you attack with a death ball. And it, here's the thing if your opponent is still on mobility when you're now on full death ball you just fucking win like mass stalkers is not going to beat mass carriers especially if those carriers have level three weapons one carrier beats three stalker three stalker and one carrier have the same supply cost 15 carriers versus 45 stalkers 15 carriers are going to be like Stalker, dead, 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 dead. This is chop suey fucking stalkers like crazy. And then all the stalkers are going to be like, one shot carrier. One shot carrier. One shot carrier. By the time they one shot like the fourth carrier, there's probably only going to be like 10 stalkers left. And from that point on, they don't one shot carriers anymore because there's not enough of them at that point. Anyways, hope this makes sense. Uh, Fury, I hope this helps you, dude. So, overall, do I suck less? You always ask me that, Koopa. And there's only so much I can tell you about your uh, your macro. Because you're showing me builds that are always really similar. And I gave you as much ideas as I could that are different from what you've shown me before. Um, but, like, this game specifically, the only thing I can really tell you about your build that's different from the previous times... Like, or like the only thing I can tell you that's improving on what you're doing already, because... Like, I, I, again, everything I already told you is how I feel like you can improve. And do you see what I mean? Like, I'm not doing replay analysis and I'm not being like, dude, what the fuck? I can't tell you anything. There's nothing to say. Shit, dude. Like, you're playing about as f flawless. No, I'm telling you something every time. And the reason why I'm telling you something every time is because you're always going to make mistakes. Thinking that you're not going to make mistakes is in the incorrect mindset, Right? Like you're even I fucking make mistakes at StarCraft 2 daily every game. Nobody plays this game perfect. And the biggest mistakes you made this game was triple forge and horrible chrono boost allocation. Those sucked. That was bad. Other than that, yeah, it was not bad. Uh but yeah, I mean yes, I mean you're always gonna be improving. Just know that. Just, like, the more you play, the more you're going to improve. But you got to really fix the, the things we talked about this game, specifically, and in your future games, and you'll have more success, guaranteed. Uh, and it's it's always going to be a build over time. So don't get impatient and be like, I'm just supposed to be good already. 
Like no one's just like good. It's it's a it's a it's a building process. So you're developing your skills as a player. Anyways, Fury, I hope it helps. Much love, man. I appreciate you doing another one. And uh, I want to make sure I'm going the right way. Yeah. yeah, I mean you're consistently giving me games that are not fucking garbage. The one game you gave me the other day was garbage. That was really bad. Uh, this. I, the game I watched the other day, like two weeks ago or a week or whatever it was, there's no fucking way you're getting diamond playing like that. No. But this, yeah, I could totally see you getting diamond playing like this. Keep improving on it. I could totally see you getting diamond playing like this. Like this looks much more formidable than your previous game I saw. But uh, anyways, yo, Fury, much love. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for watching as well. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you all in the next one. Until then, take it easy, guys. Much love. Adios. Follow for, or not follow, but uh, check out our other videos. Subscribe to this channel. Whatever you want to do. See you next time. Peace, guys.